Hey, welcome to the video. I wanted to do a quick one here. We have completed our uh, installation of a 22 kW Generac whole home standby generator. So this is what we've done is this was the original meter, which came in to the existing panel. The hole in the background, which we've put duct seal in. We have now, this used to be the service but because we've installed a generator system, this now becomes the emergency disconnect slash service disconnect. So I will try and keep the camera as steady as possible. So now this breaker, this is the point of service, the first disconnect we need. So because of that, we have the main bonding jumper outside in the cabinet here. And so what we had to change is we then brought in the utility. Instead of going out of the back, it now comes into the ATS switch. These are gasketed lock nuts because we are above live terminals. So that is a necessity because we were squeezed for space, as you can tell. Otherwise, you can use Myers hubs. But we went this route with a short nipple. We bring our utility in. This is now the main disconnect, service disconnect. We have generator coming in, which are the front terminals on the lower. And then we have load terminals, which are going to the house panel coming out of the bottom. We ran SER cable out the back. And we had to open the sheetrock up to then come into the top of the panel. So now that this is considered a sub panel, we had to make sure we went through and we separated the grounds and the neutrals. Here's the neutral bars, which are one on each side. It's where the main neutral comes in from the service. And then this black, that is an insulated bar that brings the neutral bar over here. Now, originally all the grounds were on this two, which are the bare conductors. We now have the SER. We had our grounding conductor comes out, top grounding bar, and we've relocated all of our equipment grounds to that location. And then in the bottom, we are okay down here for branch circuits to bond to the can. Now, a few things to note is when we did that, we had an old rain circuit that was three wire. So what I've done with that, it was ran with a SER cable, which is in this instance, you can tell they had two hot conductors with a concentric neutral wrapped around. And a lot of times, well, in the old way, you'd peel all those individual strands off, twist them together, that becomes your grounded or grounding conductor, whichever purpose. In this instance, we are two hots, 240 volt, does not need a neutral. That is a grounding conductor, not a grounded. It's not a neutral, it is an equipment ground. But for our range circuit, if we look in the code book, we insulated it and our authority having jurisdiction allows us if we are insulating it now, because now it is a neutral conductor, that's what we do in our area. Um, so you don't have to replace the circuit. So um, now the original water pipe bonds, grounding electrodes, your ground rods, which is a, had a number six conductor coming in, have to be transferred out to the ATS, which is where this Number four conductor came up and over. It's in the back, it's hard to see. It's that guy it is coming out. It comes over here and I intercepted the existing grounding electrodes and I relocated them to the outside ATS. This is what I like to use. I like to use some grounding C crimps and they will tell you the size of the tap and the run conductors that you can use. And I utilize a good old faithful Greenlee 
These C crimps are good for the BG die or an O die. So you'll open those guys up. This is what linemen used to use. Some of the old guys still like to use them. The lower crimp is a D3 and it will also hold um, type W crimps. But again, I'm getting away from myself. So ATS switch on the outside. Now this is now classified as sub panel. You need to separate neutrals and grounds and make sure the bonding screw that was over here. A lot of panels will either have a offset uh, piece of bar that bonds the can to the neutral. We have to take that out or it's like a green ground screw sometimes on the newer panels up near the neutral conductor on one side or the other will be that green screw get it out completely out of there so nobody mistakenly hooks it back up and creates a parallel path so what we've done from here is we have our generator conductors feeds coming from the generator and then we also have our control circuits which i always run a couple spares out there and this comes through this is your uh, your ground, your, well, black, red, white is your transfer, your 12 volt, and your ground. The blue circuit, I try and keep them as close to the color as possible, is your T1 circuit. That's your battery charger. And then you have your N1 and N2. That is my, I pull yellow and orange. That is your utility sense. And that is also how you have power out there to uh, run auxiliary your cold weather kits and etc. So this is the inside makeup. Now we come out. We've dug over. We just finished our training. So on this side you can see your green light on the side, which is saying ready to run. That generator is good to go if we lose power. Now when I ran out my conductors or my Sorry, my inch and a quarter conduit to bring the feed out. I just threw in a three quarter. You don't have to, but if you're gonna dig a ditch and we actually had to cross utilities, that red paint was the utilities that were running out. So we had to dig a ditch across that. We had to lift these flagstones up and I just ran a spare conduit, capped it off. So you never know if you want to add additional power camera because now we don't have to cut around asphalt and if we want to develop the site a little bit add a camera at a gate if you're ever opening a trench spend a little bit of extra money throw a spare uh, conduit in there so out here I always like to set up a pop-up when we are training our clients so we are currently in the unlocked position if you're opening a generac open from the middle or both hands one on each side actually should just lock this up so the, uh, yeah I was just gonna open it up it's nice and clean we just ran through got a 250 gallon propane tank it's got to be at least 10 feet away and that will give her anywhere from two to four days depending on the amount of load being served but we got good clearance all around i like to always put a four by four base fill it up with gravel even though a lot of these pads are direct to ground you don't have to do that it raises a little bit farther up so you get less chance of uh which is your intake air cooled air flows you always want to make sure these areas are clear but it gives you a nice clean edge to uh, weed whack, mow, etc. Um, so it's not just flat on the ground and picking up any debris from mowing a lawn or whatnot. Anyways, this is the exhaust. Again, you got to keep minimum uh, three feet clearance. And gas guy did a pretty good job. Does not appear to have a sediment trap, but I will reach out to him on that. Other than that, if you like the video, you have any input, um, you know, hit us thumbs up, subscribe, whatever they say, smash that button. Anyways, uh, 
yeah, hope you got something out of it. If you did, uh, come back for the next one.